Welcome to the Kaiju Podcast. I'm Ralph. I'm Jorge. And today we're talking about Varen, the unbelievable. 1962. Yes, not 1958. Yeah, right, because yeah. here's the thing. Like, I'm watching it, and I'm like, whoa. Oh, is this like, because like, all these names are coming up. I'm like, oh, is this like one of those co-productions, mm-hmm. American-Japanese? Wait, this is in English. And so then I looked it up and yeah so i guess they did the raymond burr treatment on this one yeah that they did for the original gojira Mm -hmm. uh and so things have so apparently a lot of the story is completely different yeah apparently they say (laughs) that the roar is different oh really yeah okay the that the you can go to like you can YouTube like Varen or Daikaju Baron mm-hmm. Roar and you'll get the roar and the roar is a lot more like uh, Godzilla's roar which uh-huh. is kind of like weird metallic y trumpety thing uh-huh. as opposed to this is just kind of like he didn't really have a major roar it was just like a bunch of like noises he made as he tromped along the forest it seemed like one of the main differences i found out before because we actually announced this one on our last episode but we're like kind of late in the game as far as recording it right so a lot of times what happens is like we'll say oh the next episode's this and someone will say oh make sure you blank and it's like oh, right. it's too late it's already recorded uh, but this time, someone said, make sure you watch the Japanese version. And I'm like, oh, man, we only have what's available to us. And I'm pretty sure it's the American version. And I guess also in the Japanese version, uh, Varen flies. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah, he he opens his wings up like uh, one of those, like a flying squirrel yeah. and soars across. And that also got cut out. Yeah. I actually went on eBay and bought uh a japanese dvd of it okay so on some podcast we will definitely redo and address the official dai kaiju baron movie yeah you know which is fine it's it's the least we could do for yeah sure <laughs> yeah because uh once again we're not experts <laughs> We don't, yeah. So we kind of go in this stuff blindly, but I enjoyed this movie enough to where I wanted to also watch the Japanese version. Yeah, and and I think the story is different enough. It kind of like because like when you look up, it's like if you look up the plot of the original Baron movie, uh-huh. it starts saying something about butterflies, and I'm like, oh. what? This is a completely different thing. Because like there's like these things, like, some like say these butterflies get discovered, and that sends people out to go check out this place, and that's kind of where Baron gets released. And I guess like there's only 15 minutes of footage from the original in this version, and every once in a while you can see uh, shots of characters that aren't in this movie, where you know they're main characters in the Japanese version. Like, I absolutely like, like there's like uh, the priest guy in the white robes with the beard. Like, yeah, you're like, okay, that guy's clearly main character. Uh, Shirazawa from the original Godzilla <laughs> shows up as just a guy watching. And I think according that, to IMDB, he's, he's, uh, credited as observer. Yeah. And originally he was credited as bomb expert. Okay. <laughs> They're talking about, uh, Akihiko Hirata. Is that who that is? I think so. Uh, yeah, it's like, I went, I, when I started going back and forth, it said like, cause I, you, I saw him, I recognized him. Mm-hmm even without the eye patch. And I was like, yeah. oh, that guy. And I looked him up, and he played a bomb expert in the original movie. And then in the uh, this movie, he's Observer. Yeah. And I'm like, jeez. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I I mean, so, okay. <laughs> like, the Raymond Burr, the Raymond Burr King of the Monsters, I'm fine with it. It's, it's more interesting to see uh, how they sort of cut him into the footage and so this one i want to do the same thing i want to see how they differ but we, yeah. we didn't know going into it that it was going to be so drastic what there isn't in this is i don't think they use like the body double system no. where they would have him speaking to people 
No. Um, there's a great piece of trivia in the IMDb page for this movie where it talks about how the American scenes were shot in Bronson Canyon, mm-hmm. like just outside of L.A. Yeah. And it says, interestingly, this somewhat bothered Myron Healy, who thought he was going to shoot his scenes in Japan, like Raymond Burr supposedly had for Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Interestingly, it says it a second time, when Healy appeared on the episode of Perry Mason in 1957, he talked to Burr about it, and Burr admitted that all his scenes were shot on a soundstage in Hollywood. <laughs> That's funny. That guy thought he actually went to Japan. Yeah, he's like, God damn, I don't get to... Jeez. <laughs> Uh, uh, I like the drippy font in the original titles the, in the title page. Yeah, the the very drippy font is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, immediately, uh, I'm not a fan of the dude because, like, uh, is it? I'm assuming it's his son. The the, the kid, kid with the mask. Is it his? A lot of times in these, it, well, it's. Cause I'm gonna guess it's his son. Okay. Unless it's it's his wife's little brother, but I don't think so. Uh-huh. I thought it was his son. I think it's his son. Okay. Uh, he, was only, he only is a little bit in it, but, you know, the kid has a mask on. He's like, oh, like American Halloween. And he's like, listen, we're not in America. You don't get to do Halloween here. Oh. <laughs> Leave that for the American kids. <laughs> it was like, whoa, what a dick. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the things I heard about this version is if you like to see a guy, a white guy, bossing around his <laughs> Japanese family, this is the version to watch. Yeah. But it I it wasn't as bad as I had sort of geared myself up for. Like I was like, oh man, what is gonna happen in this movie? But it wasn't yeah. too bad. It was the it was a more yeah. playful, I guess. The way he was he was kind of bossing her around, his wife Anna. But yeah. then it was kind of she was more playful with it. She's like, All right. you know, she told yeah, him to go do and something. I felt like there, you did kind of feel like he loved her, uh-huh. even though he said some things. And she had to say some things that you felt was like they tried to make it extra stereotype uh-huh. Japanese style. Yeah. You got a job here to do, and it'll take a lot more than mumbo jumbo. Oh, um, <laughs> so uh, they talk about Obaki. Yeah. Uh, Which and is... he says it is. He says it was their name for a prehistoric reptile. Yeah. Obake is is. It's supposed to be like a shapeshifter. Okay. Uh, but it's now like, especially in Hawaii, I know they use obake a lot. Obake is also commonly used for a ghost, mm-hmm. like when you tell ghost stories. It's, oh, okay. It's, it's, it's like uh, they use the word obake for that too. I don't know why they kept calling it Obaki. <laughs> and if you're going to call it Obaki the whole time, why not call the movie that? In the American version. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what else I had read? That this was supposed to be a TV movie. It was supposed the, to be a... It was supposed to be an American and Japanese collaboration of a TV movie. And okay. then, like, ABC pulled out. And then, But they decided to make it anyway and... The... Oh, wait a minute. Wait, I might be confusing it with the other movie. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't think the other movie was a co production. Oh, no. no, 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 because I think it's why this is, you know how this is kind of shot squarish? Yeah. Uh, I think it was because it was supposed to be on TV. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I find that part in my notes. I read that, I that one of the of differences is they take out Akira Ukafube's Japanese score from the original. And dropped in uh, there sci-fi music. There were some music. really weird score things, and then but there was like Godzilla music towards the beginning. There's a little bit of Rodan music in it. Yeah, yeah. There's a part where this where like the music kind of like this kind of you know Asiany music sounding thing, and then it cuts off real abruptly because the guy has to come in and say something uh-huh. to his wife. There's okay. some really weird things they did with the sound in this. So the whole plan uh, is this guy, there's a salt (laughs) lake. Yes. And he is going to purify it using chemicals. Correct. Into a freshwater lake. And as if he's kind of seems 
kind of surprised that the fish have a bad reaction to this. <laughs> Well, before that, they, he's displacing natives. The natives don't want him doing this. Right. The natives use that lake every day. Yeah. And the natives think that there or believe that there's a, a monster inside of it, which we see at the very, very beginning. There is like there's a there's a couple shots of, of Varen or Obaki, you know, tearing down some mountains and stuff. But. The thing is, he this this guy gets wind that the natives are, are calling him a cold-hearted tyrant, right? And I'm like, well, it's in yeah. the newspaper. Yeah, it's but yeah, very accurate. <laughs> yeah, and he apparently has like the backing of the military, but it seems like he's just doing this on his own. Yeah, he seems kind of off the rails. <laughs> yeah, he's he's living in a cabin by this lake, and he's gonna go dropping uh, these desalination grenades into it and just yeah. assume that everyone's cool with it and can't yeah. and can't even fathom can't even fathom why he they does would not get it yeah <laughs> he doesn't know why they they hate him or anything the the yeah the part that it, or, that where Anna says something about that they bring shame on my honorable husband and I was like oh, oh god no I just see honorable so, well, and he says worse than that they bring tears to my wife and then he like kisses her eye okay like he's eating the tears or something he kisses he i i try to keep an eye out for this looking for a lip uh, kiss looking for a lip kiss it doesn't happen does not happen it they almost do but then get distracted by varian or explosions or something and my only theory is is that the male actor <laughs> maybe had an issue with this? What? I don't know. It seems really weird. Uh, I I, I think I don't. I think they were afraid audiences might have an issue with it. Okay. Well, so someone definitely had an issue. Because with... if you, yeah, I mean, obviously <laughs> this is this is pretty late in the game here. But I know there's definitely I know in older movies there's definitely uh, interracial things was very difficult and they 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 tiptoed a lot lightly around things like where it's like oh you know there would be there would be like westerns like where it's like oh this this woman falls in love with a Native American person but then one of them has to die in the movie uh-huh. so they don't actually go so far as to consummate the relationship or anything like that. (laughs) And I think that, I think uh, that's what I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if anyone's really kind of like looked at this stuff about that business, but um, yeah. But I mean, just like by him, as soon as he kissed her on the eye, Mm -hmm. it was immediate red flags. I was like, okay, something's up. Well, I was like, I was like, maybe, (laughs) Maybe she's his adopted daughter or something. Or maybe, I don't know. There was something I was like going, maybe they're not husband and wife until it finally explicitly said it. Well, he does hate salt water. So maybe he wanted to eradicate her salty tears. <laughs> Completely <laughs> off the face of the earth by eating. That could be it. It doesn't make the, it. There's a, also the whole thing with the newspapers coming out is the other guy. The guy who's like the military liaison for uh-huh. him, who who basically he's there to translate the old movie to him. <laughs> yeah, he's like someone says something over the radio in the old movie clip, and it cuts to him at the radio going, "Oh, they're saying this." <laughs> he says they should have laws regulating uh, laws and regulations governing newspaper reporters. Yeah. It was like, oh boy, <laughs> mm, not good in this day and age mm, to hear that. It's like, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's exactly what's happening right now. And I could say that because we're only recording this like five days out. <laughs> yeah, toxic effect on fish. Well, duh. Yeah. Oh, and then Elsie, when he's all, he's like, all his tests are failing. And he's got those test tubes, and he goes, "Damn it, mud again! Nothing yeah. but mud and, mud sand. and sand!" And he freaks out. Is he... Lots of day for night shooting in this movie. I just assumed it was all day. <laughs> yeah. 
there's like when I was a when I was a kid, I couldn't process day for night. I didn't understand. Like there was something yeah. about it I didn't understand. There's the uh, the yeah. the Brady Bunch where they go to the Grand Canyon. Yeah, and it was supposed to be night, and I could not fathom it being nighttime, and re- and just thinking like, why are they going to bed in the middle of the day? It's yeah. It, I think I think when when uh, Mystery Science Theater three thousand really started pointing that stuff out. Yeah, in movies is when I really started like training myself to notice when they're like going mm-hmm. man it's really bright out here at night <laughs> and they would make those kind of jokes yeah i was like yeah it's a good point yeah all right baron finally shows up i mean i, well, I mean go ahead yeah i was I'm gonna say the same to thing <laughs> i was gonna say the th- same thing because he shows up about a half hour into the movie but i was like man he finally showed up and i'm like oh wait but at least this isn't Diamogen. Because I felt like I felt like we were with all the American footage, we we're getting to a point where we weren't going to get any till the last ten minutes, like Dimogen. Oh no! Well, and no, I, no, no, I and then I heard that they had cut out him flying, and so I'm like, man, they must have really chopped a lot out. But luckily, I mean, the movie's like what an hour and seven minutes long. It's pretty short, and so he comes about halfway through, uh, is, and it's good. Yeah, his first uh, the foot. And then it cuts to them pretending that he's like it's like he's causing an earthquake. Yeah, it was great. It, it's like uh, when you were little, and they used to tell you that certain big dinosaurs would cause earthquakes when they walked. Uh-huh. The so the Varen suit reminds me of the Godzilla Millennium suit, like when he's walking, not when he's crawling. When he's walking, uh, he's kind of muscular. Yeah, which is. I think pretty rare for like these older kaiju movies. Cause usually like if you look at like the old Godzilla suit from like the 60s and seventies, he doesn't really look muscular. It just looks like a guy in kind of a loose suit. Yeah. But this one had like defining muscles on his arms and stuff. And, and the suit was more kind of skin tight. Uh, I thought his face looks a little goofy, but I think for the most part, I think he looked really cool. I like him a lot. Yeah. And it might it might obviously get some uh, a little bit of a pass on the kitschiness of it. Uh-huh. Seeing him in black and white was kind of cool too. Yeah, to, you know, because there's only you know th- this was the last black and white one, right? So there's yeah. only so many uh, of these black and white kind of looking mm-hmm. kaiju, and this kind of kind of has a cool look to it. Yeah, um, and he crawls one... and walks, which is like the best of both worlds. Yeah, he does crawl better. I like his look when he's crawling better than when he's walking. Oh, okay. But um, and it's also like because like like really kind of like you can really kind of make out the the actor's head in the neck. Mm-hmm. You can really kind of see it. You you can see kind of the shape of the neck, almost like he's he's swallowing something. Uh-huh. Um, uh, but uh, I thought it was really good, and definitely this actor had to do a lot because like he also had to do all that underwater stuff. Yeah, and I am like that can't be easy to be underwater in the suit. Yeah, which is probably a lot of foam and stuff, just absorbing water and getting heavier and heavier as it goes. Yeah. But again, I love it when these costumes get in the water. It yeah. looks so cool. Yeah, and it uh, kind of so even the... had that thing where we saw in like the Roland Emmerich nineteen ninety eight Godzilla movie, where you see the water swell before the head comes out. Yeah, like they were able to do that with the suit, like just for a little bit, and it has those like cool, like weird, like crystals on his head and back, like his crystal mohawk. All the spikes, so yeah. great. Yeah. So that one guy who dies of fright. Yeah, I thought that I was like, oh, this is an interesting power to have for a kaiju. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just flat out it's just scary. But I don't think Varen really has powers. He just smashes with his tail, oh, yeah. right? I forgot. I wanted to look that up because, like, because we, obviously, he... Wikizilla likes to like they'll, 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 you'll get a guy and they'll kind of give their all the different rules. But, yeah, but he doesn't. He doesn't fly in this. Uh, so I mean, tick that off of the of the powers. But for the most part, he just tramples and bashes stuff with his tail. But I thought he was cool enough where I didn't care that he didn't have powers. Yeah, I liked him. My one of my favorite parts, and I wish this is something that still exists, and I could track it down. So once the military gets wind of Varen coming to the city, they set up their kind of military uh, uh, 
game board thing that like kind of risk game board where you know they oh, shuffle that around was the tanks. Awesome. <laughs> they shuffle around the tanks and stuff with those sticks, but they also had a model of Varen. They automatically on the board. just had a model of Varen. And it I I want that. I want someone to make like a prop replica of that that you can get. Cause it, it was, I mean, we ought to automatically have an affection towards Godzilla toys and Godzilla movies. I think it was, uh, I think it was Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla with the kid playing with them on the slide. But this one, I like that it was functional and it made no sense that they had one laying around. Uh, yeah. They, they, yeah, they had to like commission the guy. Uh, we have a new enemy. <laughs> uh, he looks something like this. Get get on it because because we, this is a map. Yeah, we've been using a bottle cap. Yeah, I was gonna say, what would you use? So if this happened, or if something like this happened in real life, do you think someone would in the military would just grab? Well, I guess they all have like satellite imagery and stuff now. But if they had one of these war rooms with, with one of these boards. You think they would just grab a Godzilla action figure in place yeah, of whatever I was like, the monster is? It'd be great if it wasn't Godzilla, because like, it's like as if they had one from the last time. So yeah. We're ready for the next time a monster shows up. <laughs> but that was... I love that. Uh, Varen, like... There's, but there's, there's a part where it looks like Varen is sneaking up on a guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Even though we know the earth shakes every time he takes a step. Yeah. But then that guy falls off a cliff, and then we get, uh, you know, a great little moment with a doll. Yeah, a good one. It falls so far. <laughs> it's, such a, it's such a tiny doll. Because um, these landslides. <laughs> oh, yeah, he yells at her to get back in the cave. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so one of the things that was built for the purpose of this American version of the movie was that giant... Varen claw uh-huh. in the door in the opening of the cave, yeah. Which is, I think, why they used it as much as they did. <laughs> yeah, the uh, I uh, the scale of Varen uh, kind of reminded me of Diamogen a little bit. Like he wasn't uh-huh. super gigantic, so when yeah. He, like when he grabbed that airplane, yeah. Like it's a big airplane. Like, it's a big airplane model as opposed to a little tiny airplane model. Yeah, it's almost like when Frankenstein um, was... Oh, grabs you know, the tank? When, or when he comes out. Yeah. When he comes out and there's that big boat. Yeah. And he's in the water with the big boat. Yeah. Because you know, like, in, like, the cheaper movies where you can tell they just went to, like, the model store and just bought, you know, regular yeah. model airplanes. What was there? But this yeah. one looked like it was built specifically for the movie. Because I don't think that's right. a scale that you would find in a toy store. But I, I, I like that. I want more. I want more of that. The the scale down kaiju where they're still big, but so good. But, I mean, there's a lot. Like the, there's little model fishing boat was good. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Even though you only saw it for like a second, and then yeah, the big planes he was swiping at, and then there's that part. When there's like the battleship that kind of comes along the side of him for a moment too. Yeah. Yeah, we need to see the Japanese version. Um, there's a lot of transitions where they would cut from one scene to another just by sliding the scene, like sliding the next scene. <laughs> yeah, like a like when you turn the page of a comic book on an iPad or something. It just yeah, slides over. I notice there's a lot of jump cuts too. There's a lot of like weird, just like in the middle of a sentence, they'll just cut to like a closer shot. Yeah, it's kind of strange. It, it seems like this was kind of rushed, like the Americanized version felt rushed. The uh, yeah. So then, Baron's underwater, uh-huh, and there's... they're just blowing up death charts all around him, and yeah. he's just kind of like, "There's a part." Well, first, there's a part where like the thing goes by, and he's like sneaking. He's like he's hiding <laughs> behind a rock. Yeah, and and but then they just start just blasting him in the water with those death charges. Yeah. But that was my favorite shot, I think, in the movie is him under the water and all this stuff exploding around him. Yeah, he was like, he was like, he was behind a rock that was shaped like just a little bit like, different like than him. he was. Yeah. Uh, There's an interesting part then in like the big culminating final fight when they're 
dropping all these parachutes on him oh. is that a parachute gets stuck on the suit. Yeah. And it stays there. For, yeah. They don't have a time to go and fix it or yeah. him to break it off or anything. So, yeah, I'm guessing the actor probably couldn't quite tell or couldn't quite get to it to figure out how to remove it. Yeah. So, yeah, it stays for an extremely long time. But I like that. I really like it. I think it's, I, I mean, it's, it's stupid to say, but I feel like it adds to the realism. <laughs> like <laughs> a lot of these, like a lot of these movies, you don't see a lot of just, I mean, humans are throwing everything they can at these monsters, but you never really see, you know, bits of airplane hanging off of them or, you know, like what if, yeah. a, what if a jet got stuck in Godzilla's tail fins, like just a hunk of it. And like there's a pilot still inside or something. Well, well I think well what I think is Godzilla would have the control of the tail to do like a just like a, a quick whiplash to get and it, off of there. it would knock him off. Yeah. I don't, I think he would shake off anything that was on him. Yeah. Uh for me what it adds is to the realism that these are just guys trying to earn a living dressing up in monster suits. And exploding <laughs> shit around them. Yeah. And that I like. Yeah. Yeah. When it landed on them, I'm like, oh, that's that's kind of funny that it happened to land on them. Yeah. But, oh, it got stuck. But then it's like, oh, that's, that's still there. Yeah. Oh, and then there's parts where it's like it's hanging down on, and, and yeah. like it's like hanging under him. And that's how Baron gets defeated and he just kind of crawls away. Yeah. He may return tomorrow. Well, yeah, he there was this today. thing. Uh, is it dead? It appears to be dying. Yeah. And he's like, well, look, whether he's dead or alive, we won't have to worry anymore because we still have those chemicals. Yeah. They, uh, so, okay, I don't think there's another Varian movie. And I don't even know if he appears oh. in any more movies. Um, but well... I, because I did read that this wasn't a, a success. Like, they were hoping that it would be as successful as uh, uh, Godzilla and Rodan. But I don't think Varen shows up anywhere else unless it's, like, some sort of stock footage. I'm going to look it up. I probably should have looked it up ahead of time. Oh, a relic oh. of the dinosaur Varenus Pater that lived in the Mesozoic era. It is equipped with thin flying membranes between its arms and hind legs, which can be expanded into wings to fly at mock speeds. It is a formidable opponent against fighter planes and has a habit of swallowing things that glow and its second appearance in the film Destroy All Monsters. It preyed on living creatures. Destroy All Monsters? Yeah. It looks like those are the two movies he's in. Well, I guess when it's all monsters. <laughs> oh. They, they refer to him as a trifibian. Okay. Well, we didn't see the third swimming one. land in there. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's based on a Draco. D R A C O. You gotta look this up, dude. Is that a real animal? It's a yeah, real. Yeah, I was animal. like looking at because like there's all these color pictures of Varen. Yeah. D R A C O. Yeah. Go to the Wikipedia page. It looks like a leaf, but it's a little flying, a little flying lizard. I just get Draco gun. Draco and Draco Malfoy. Draco. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. Lizard. Oh, that thing. Oh, yeah. I, I just. There was like. They were like. BBC was rerunning uh, Planet Earth over the, the uh, Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, yeah, we saw that guy. Yeah, he's cool. Looking. It's based on that guy? Yeah. I think the flying part, which we didn't see. But I'm really interested in seeing the Japanese version because. You know he's. You know he also reminds me of the uh, wolf in Rampage. Oh yeah, the wolf. <laughs> the wolf flies. Because the wolf had like yeah. porcupine spikes too. Yeah. He was like spiky, so it's kind of like a. It's kind of like that. I didn't hate this movie. Uh, I liked it, but it wasn't. It didn't like knock my socks off. And uh, I, I'm man. I want to see the Japanese version. Yeah, that just makes me want to see the Japanese version. Yeah, because so, I, yeah, yeah. When when that DVD comes in, well, we'll, we'll I think we should slip it in, in, in you know, in the in the list to yeah. knock it out pretty yeah. quickly because 
because I'm anxious to see it too. Yeah, I really liked Varen, and since we'd only we don't have many appearances from him, um, I don't know. I'm anxious, and then uh, yeah, we're actually gonna get to destroy all monsters pretty soon. So um, I, I haven't seen it in in years. So yeah, I'd like to see him in color because I always see him flying above like the blue sky. He's kind of like a uh, kind of more of a tan color, I think. We'll see how he how he looks because I like the black and white version just because he looks gray, <laughs> like a cool lizard. But yeah, I, oh, just, apparently he's smaller in Destroy All Monsters. Oh, he's even smaller because he seemed pretty small in this one. Well, I mean, compared to like these monsters that can step on skyscrapers in other movies. Oh, okay. So Varen's name likely comes from the scientific genus name Varanus, which is commonly known as the monitor lizard. So it's like, uh, okay. Um, like a Komodo dragon. All right. Which now I think about it. That's kind of, he does look, man, it would be great if you had that tongue thing that keep coming out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um. Yeah, they were saying something about that the uh, the suit was very deteriorated, probably because so, of all the water. So they, that's why they had to do, I think, a new suit for him. Or... Are you gonna hunt down uh, action figures, toys? Varen. Yeah. Oh, this is probably a pretty rare. I wonder. Yeah, I don't know. There probably won't be that many since it, this is basically it. Apparently it was meant to be in a lot more movies. Oh, man, this is so sad. Okay, just like the Baragon suit, the Varen suit was heavily damaged from water exposure and deterioration. Which, okay, I, I'm, I'm sad that the suits get really damaged, but I'm glad that they're not precious with them. Yeah. But because of this, he could only appear and destroy all monsters for a few seconds as an immobile puppet. Oh no! Very sad. <laughs> oh no! Is it? Is it the? It must be the flying one then, right? Uh, I don't know. Well, we'll find out when we watch that movie. No wonder why I don't remember him from the movie. Man. So now we absolutely have to watch the Japanese version to get more of him. We owe it to him. And it's also sad to know that the Baragon suit had the same problem. Like the Baragon suit was so messed up. Yeah, but we got more Baragon. Baragon yeah. showed up in Godzilla GMK, and he's been in other movies, but it sucks that, that Varen hasn't made a reappearance. It'd be cool if Toho did something. I, think, I, I mean, I guess if you're going to do a giant lizard movie, you might as well make it Godzilla. Yeah. And there's not really, there's not really a different spin on this, at least not the American version. The, yeah, it's just you need it. Yeah, it, it's well, but with him flying, yeah, that's that's a good that's a good difference. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's a dog fight. We uh, we're we're probably gonna watch the Japanese version <laughs> sooner than later. I think. Yeah, I think so. Because our our love of Ashira Honda, you know, his contribution contribution is like completely stripped from this version. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I, I mean, this isn't going to be in my top five because it feels more middle of the ground, like middle. Yeah, of the road. It's not. It's not that big a deal. But I could. I like the design and a lot of the model work so much. I feel like the model work looks like it could be on par with uh, Frankenstein, but, uh, but it's it's all chopped up, so. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully soon. Let me know because I, I kind of want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have nothing else for this one. Let's uh, <laughs> let's talk about what we have next time. Uh, our next next time. Yeah. Oh our next, yeah. Our next episode. Um, <laughs> I'm excited to talk about it. Let's go into some Ameritrash. Yeah, we're talking about the giant claw. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, yeah, you're going to want to join us for that, I'm sure. 
It is a crazy looking bird. <laughs> we'll get into it. <laughs> um, but until then, you can go to kaijupod.com and that gives you the big, uh, the big monster list where you can check out the movies we've done and you can watch the movies that we're about to do. It also gives you a link to our ins- Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Yeah. So until uh, next time, man, I have nothing. <laughs> This makes me a little nervous also about the uh, other uh, – because like this was – we found this on Amazon Prime. Yeah. And it's... there's other kaiju movies in that Amazon Prime section. I'm just like, oh, I hope I hope they're not All problematic. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean what was weird was Amazon Prime had two different versions of this movie. Like, if you look up Varen and, and Amazon Prime, two different, like, posters show up. And so I checked both of them, and I think one might have been slightly better quality. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. But it was it was still both the American version. Okay. Yeah. So that was a bummer. But, yeah, I guess until next time, I'm waiting for that Japanese version to come. That's what I'm doing, too. Yeah, I'm okay. hunting for the Japanese version. I just, <laughs> I just want to see the Japanese cast get to, get to do their bit. Yeah. Yeah, who is that old man? He clearly is some sort of guy who is uh, like a religious or, you know, I don't know. He seems like some sort of spiritual leader. And then there are definitely. Yeah, because there's a the whole thing about the, 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 all the, all that stuff with the locals and the masks. Yeah. And I who... feel like they put the kid in the mask at the beginning so they didn't have to explain to all the people in the masks at the end like they needed to use that footage of people running away but they had masks on so it's like oh well why so they just put that kid in at the beginning just to show the mask but i don't know we'll see yeah we'll see i'm excited we'll I can't see. Wait. sooner than later yeah, we'll yeah. See. all right surface is covered by water. Its fathomless depth uncharted, unexplored. Who can really say that Obaki does not lurk somewhere in the deep, waiting for the right moment to return? Could happen. Maybe a hundred years from now, maybe tomorrow. It might even happen today. (laughs) 